And it's time now for charting futures. Here's Abigail Doolittle and Abigail. So um, not a lot of movement for markets today. It looks like. Small moves indeed, Joe. It's hard to uh, not believe or to believe, I guess, that it is uh, the week of Christmas and Hanukkah because we're seeing it right here if we go cross asset class. Tiny, tiny moves cross asset class. We see that the S&P 500 futures up slightly, although we do have another all-time high. Crude up slightly, so those are risk assets. But on the haven side, uh, the 10-year note futures just down slightly. Uh, the best bid here is for gold futures up about half a percent. On the year, though, it's a much different story, at least for stocks and bonds. Let's take a look at this uh, interesting chart. What we're looking at here in blue, we are looking at the 10-year yield. In white, we're looking at the S&P 500. Right now, the S&P 500 up almost 20 9% year to date, headed to its best year since uh, 2013. The 10 year yield uh, falling by about 75 bips, the best year for bonds going all the way back to 2011. And the interesting thing is, for most of the year, we had both stocks and bonds rallying at the same time. Right around uh, the beginning of August, though, we see a little bit of a divergence here where treasuries are more in a range. However, as stocks have simply gone higher, it'll be interesting to watch uh, treasuries because if yields continue to back up, it may be a signal that stocks could climb higher in uh, 2020. To talk more about the bond side of uh, the equation, Steve Sosnick of Interactive Brokers. Interesting chart there. Yeah, what a I year. Mean, well, I mean, it's interesting. You would expect that there'd be some divergences, right? Because when we came into the year, the Fed was on, the in, on a tightening cycle, and so you had rates backing up, and people worried about the economy. As the year went on, you've had both the Fed, which is unusual, right? You've had the Fed cutting and the economy strengthening, which is not necessarily um, a normal picture, but that's why you've seen some kind of, you know, divergences and convergences at various points. So that uh, was a chart of yield and the S&P 500. Yes. Let's now take a look at the Treasury futures, which is actually price. So yields, yeah. of course, go down, price trades inverse to yield. But here we see uh, this is the Treasury note, and here's this banner here, the best since 2011. Yeah, you've, you've had a great year. Again, it's because you've had the easing cycle. You've had really no signs of inflation. The longer out you go on the, on the Treasury curve, of course, the more sensitive you are to inflation. And so... You know, you pretty much had this launch pattern, and up you went throughout most of the year as the Fed became friendlier and friendlier without the inflation. All of a sudden, though, we're starting to peak a little bit and start to roll over. You see the trends start to roll. You see the um, momentum indicators starting to dip down. That's the kind of stuff that gets a little worrisome. And one of the reasons we're rallying in the stock market is because we love the economy, and that's not necessarily friendly for the bonds. And in about 20 seconds, let's connect it to the options. Sure. That's, of course, what we do on Monday, talk about the options on futures. So you are putting on a put spread. Yep. Uh, if you looked at the chart there, we were basically hovered, hovering right around the 128 line, and that seemed to be some real support. If you're long, you may want to hedge that, and the way you would do that would be by buying the 128 puts. They're listed as February. They actually expire in the end of January. It's quite confusing, but that's the way it is. Um, Always. <laughs> but to defer the cost, you would sell the 127 puts with the same expiry because that was the next level of support. You figure that you'd give up a little bit of your downside to defray the cost. It would cost you about a quarter. You can make a dollar. If not, you've hedged yourself for a quarter.